Hi everyone, it's me, Marcy Lamberson, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a puppy face bead. Now, these are just kind of casual and fun, and I designed them mostly so that if any of you want to donate to Beads of Courage, it would be an awesome thing to do. Let me reverse this camera, and I'm going to show you my tools, my glass, and then we'll get started. Thanks for joining me. And, ta, wonderful. Okay, so let me show you my tools. I have a Cote Marver. You can use a regular graphite marver, brass marver, whatever you use. This is the one I use. I love the large surface on it. You need a poke tool of some sort if you want for the eyes. This is the one that I'm using. However, you can use the end of a mandrel, whatever you like some didymium. See how strong those magnifiers are on mine. I love them. I also am going to use mashers and you can use tweezer mashers, barbecue mashers, parallel mashers, whatever kind. I tend to always have my brass stump shaper. I'm going to hold it sideways so you can see how worn out it is. See that poor handle. Oh my goodness. I've used this for about 20 years now and I still love it. And the other kind of different tool that I'm going to be using is are these concave convex pliers. See how they dip down there and then this other section is round? It, they, they are wonderful for things like, oh, petals, dog ears, ruffles. They run about 15 bucks, somewhere around there. And oftentimes you find them where uh, jewelry making supplies are sold. We're going to use three colors this time, but you can use any colors you want. I have a dark ivory for the base. I believe this is sage, but I'm not positive, but I think so. It looks like it to me. And a little bit of black. You just need a stringer's worth. And I just kind of grabbed a little bit glass here. So now I'm going to hook us in and double check that we can see everything. So here, let me see whether I can change it just a tiny bit more. Oh, adapting everything, you know. I'll get it one of these decades. Okay, so then I check to see that you can see me. Okay, but you can't see there. Got it. Okay, so here we go. Let's light the torch and have a little fun. Oh, I'm going to be using a 3 32nd mandrel with dip and go sludge on it also. So let me just get my cords pulled around me. I'm using a headset to talk and it um, feels weird being connected by a wire while I'm doing this. Okay. Add a little oxygen. I'm using just your basic minor torch, which I absolutely love. Okay, so here we go. A little bit of dark ivory. I believe it's dark. You can use any ivory you have. And you can make pretty much any size shape bead that you want that you're going to press gently. So let's get this melting on. When I use my dip and go blue sludge, first I have it and it's kind of grayish blue. And then the first time it goes in the heat, it gets this kind of darker gray look. And then after a little bit, it turns this kind of very pale gray, almost whitish color. You want to be working onto the whitish color. That means that it's been gotten nice and hot. So let's just put some glass on. And I am laying it on so that my rod is pretty much perpendicular to my mandrel. I think you all know this already. Just in case you're a beginner in watching this, this is something that a beginner can make also. And this will go rather quickly. If you are doing one of the Beads of Courage challenges for lots and lots of beads, I hope you make a whole lot of these. And you know, with dog faces, you can make them so many different sizes and shapes and colors. I think it gives you a lot of variety. You don't have to make the same thing over and over again, and you can still get a lot of variation. 
You can change the eyes around, the muzzle, the ears. There's so many different things that you can change to make it a little bit different and keep yourself very happy while making them. That one didn't go on so straight, but we'll fix that in just a second. Okay, so one of the ways of fixing it, I could just take my stump shaper and gently tap it up like that. And that definitely is not enough glass, but if I were to flatten this so it was wider here and narrower here, that'd make a great dog-shaped face also. So you really have a lot of options. Let's add a little more glass though. Okay, just heating up a little bit more ivory to lay it on. I want to make this a little longer also, but let's make it a little wider first. Just going to keep going and going and going. I used to teach this in my beginner bead making class or something similar to this. So some of you who took it years ago may remember it or have made this particular bead before. And what's fun is if you are more skilled to see what variations you end up doing also. Okay, so let's give this just a little marver and you'll see this wonderful surface on here. So this would be a pretty, pretty wide face, but rather short face. I want to add just a little more length to it. And this is not in round, I'm noticing also, and I am not going to mess with it to make it exactly round. What I'll do is I'll add glass if it seems too far off. Okay, so we've added a little more onto the end and we're going to marver it again after we heat things up. There we go. That feels a lot better. And we'll just tidy it up a little bit like this. And don't forget, when you're working with dark ivory, it is one mushy glass. So you want to keep an eye on the temperature of it. You want it to be malleable, but not too malleable. Okay, so we're going to press it. I'm using these mashers, but you can use any one that you have. And I'm just gently pressing it. I want it to stay on the thicker side also does not need to be perfect. There you go. And now I am done with those, with that tool. And you can see there's some little chill marks on it. We're going to get those out just by bringing it close in in the flame and hitting it relatively hard and letting it cool. We'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so my first thing I'm going to do is about two thirds of the way up. I'm going to make a dot out of the sage on, you can do either the left or the right side, it doesn't matter, but that is going to be like a spot, uh, a large spot with the dog's eye inside of it. So I don't need a ton of glass. I heated it up, I'm letting it cool a little bit, and then I'm going to bring it underneath the flame and heat it some more and then press it flat. There we go, we've got a spot there. So that's telling me where that dog eye is gonna go. Next, we're gonna heat up a little bit more of our ivory. Oh, the piece shot right off of there, didn't it? I'll show it, there we go, picked it up. And I'm heating up a good dollop of glass of this ivory and I'm going to place it on the bottom half, one side of the half. And I always start with the right side. You can tell I'm a lefty. I do farthest away first and then closer to me. I, I figure I've got better uh, motor control closer to me. So I do farther away and then it's easier for me to match it. I just want it on half and I'm holding it because the ivory is pretty warm. And you know how it mushes around on you. So 
I'm holding it straight up so that the dot sinks back down onto it a little bit. And while that's cooling, I'm watching the color change. I can heat up the back side and keep the bead warm. I can heat up part of this side. Okay, looks rather more like modern art instead of a dog face right now, doesn't it? So I'm gonna heat up the ivory again. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side right there. See how fast this is? And you know, if you aren't talking, it will go even faster. But I wanna be sure you understand exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing. I've warmed up the area where I'm gonna be dropping the glass. And I push down, pull up a tiny bit, and I'm letting it cool, letting it cool. And I'm watching the color till the glow starts going away. Did a little bit of what's that called the Dairy Queen whip or something and if your ivory is sinking to one side or the other counteract it with gravity so we're pretty close there I think you can see that I'll move it around just in case with the lighting I have interior lighting in my uh, hood vent so it um, Sometimes it shines funny. Okay, so I'm gonna make dots where the eyeballs are gonna go. I'm heating up this part, not the muzzle a whole lot. I'll keep it warm, the backside stays warm, but I'm heating up where I want to press in and inside of that dot on one side, I made a hole and then opposite, I made another hole. Okay, so that's as much for me to aim where I wanna put my dots. But first, I want to heat up a little bit of the glass, of the black glass, and put in a nose. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pull a little bit of this rod into a thinner piece, like a fat stringer, and that's going to go on the nose. And I am going to heat up the bead release on the side here that I know I'm not using so that I have something to pull it off of. And I'm just pulling 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 just a little bit letting it cool okay and when i pull it off it usually leaves a little bit of bead release on the end so i want to get that dollop off so now that we've done that let's heat the bead back up because we don't want it getting too cold and we're going to heat up some of this glass and i made it thinner so i could fit it in the crevice between the two muzzle cheeks, and I'm keeping it forward just a little bit. See how we made that dot there? Okay, so we're gonna heat just it back up. See how just the nose is glowing? And I pushed it in a little bit, and now I'm gonna press it down just a bit. I kinda like that, but you could do whatever you want. Some people like larger noses on their dogs, and some don't. So, you've got some options. Now we want to put black in each of the divots there. We are moving quickly so you can see how fast you can get these done. And I pulled the stringer again one more time. And I'm going to get rid of the end that touched the bead release. Well, I'm hoping to at least. Here we go. And we're going to heat up where the glass is going to go. And heat up the back of the glass because we really don't want the bead to get cold and lose it, right? Okay, heat up a little bit of glass and aim for the hole. And ta-da! We're going to do the same thing on the other side after we heat up the back of the dog face. It's already looking cute. Just a little bit. Aim for the divot. Flame cut and heat the back side keep it warm now i'm looking to see where we are on it if you want you can add at this time some eyebrows or you can leave them without eyebrows i'll show you how to do them just in case you want to make them and what i do is i thin out my bead release uh, not my bead release my black stringer jeez what am i thinking about and i am turning down my flame can you see how it's smaller now I'm going to heat above the eyeballs and I heat up a little bit of glass and then I start at one end and just bring it across a little bit. I don't want a big eyebrow. Just added just a little, it's almost like a comma or an apostrophe there. 
So heat it up, make sure it's nice and attached. We'll do the same on the other side. Depending upon the way that you make the eyebrows is helps give him an expression or her, depending upon what you're making. When you do them like that with a little bit of a curve, it's more of a surprise or a cute. If you do them facing down, it would be mad. If you do them more up, it's more surprise. Straight across is, doesn't give them a whole lot of more personality, but it does accentuate the eyes a little bit more. If you make really big eyes, or when I do, sometimes I add a tiny dot of white also. So let's add some ears, and I like to put a good sized dollop of glass over the sage side, I'm going to use ivory, and over the non-sage side, I'm going to use uh, some sage. Okay, we just kind of do opposites. So I heat up the corner where I'm going to put it, gave it just a little bit of heat, and I touch down with the glass, press, pull up, let it cool, let it cool. I'm watching the color of it, feeling it a little bit. And there we go. It's not done yet, but we're going to add the sage first so that we can see whether I can get them rather even, because even is a good thing. Well, that glass was spitting, wasn't it? Okay, so let's heat up some of this glass and then we're gonna heat up that corner just like we did before. And I'm gonna add a little less glass and then show you how to add more. I touched the corner, pushed in a little bit. It's nice and attached. Got it in there. And while that's cooling a little bit, we're gonna heat up the bead just a tiny bit. And you can see where that's a little bit smaller on that side. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more. And that's closer. I want a similar amount. So I added almost like a rainbow or an upside down smile. You can call it any shape, kind of an upside down U shape to make it more similar to the other side. And they don't have to be perfect because we're gonna do different things with each ear. So let's heat up the dog face to make sure he's nice and warm. We're gonna heat up the ivory first. And I heated up first the back side to add the most heat there. That way I'm not hitting the front of the face and melting the features in. So it's got a nice glow to it. And I'm taking the concave convex pliers and see that's the divot side. That's going to go on the bottom so it gives a nice cup to the ear. And I'm gently pressing it. Just a gentle press. Now that's your time if you want to readjust, move it around. See how you can do that? While well, you've got the pliers on it. So I'm going to heat up the bead while that's cooling a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing with the sage side here. Heating up a lot from the back, a little bit from the front. Keep the rest of your bead warm. Don't want to lose it at this point. Go back, give it a little more heat. And I'm going to squeeze just like the other one and then I'm going to pull it down a little bit so it comes down near the eye. It gives him rather a rakish look. If you want you can add little indentations on the muzzle but not necessary. I already put my dotty back here. I'll show you real quick. Just heat it up a little bit on the side and a one, two, three shows where his whiskers might be one two three that's enough and we have made a puppy dog isn't that cute you can add a little heart on the back i do that often so here you go i hope you make a lot of them and honestly i hope you donate some to beads of courage this is marcy lamberson don't forget to subscribe to my youtube and find me also on facebook take care bye